So we are um, here at OLP and we're getting ready for Lent. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are too. Um, and today I have with me Ann Nicholas. Um, I'm very excited to um, introduce her to you. If you don't already know her, you might know her better than me. I'm Elizabeth Pike, by the way. Um, and Anne is a singer extraordinaire. She sings in our choir. She's our wonderful cantor. Um, she also is a teacher by profession. Um, she has um, five children, um, and she, if you know Deacon Allen, um, Deacon Allen is her husband. Um, so she agreed to come here today to talk to us a little bit about how she teaches her children about Lent, if you're looking for ideas with your own children. Uh, well, there's something I've done with my children for a number of years, and it's always been a struggle to um, make concrete the things that we do as Catholics and what the meaning is and how you fit it all together. So, um, especially for young children, it's really hard for them to give things up and they don't really see the reason why. So, what we do is as a family, we come up with a list of things we'd like to pray for, and it always includes our family members, people who are sick, people who have died, different causes, and we write these things down, and then we decide what we are going to do as a family to, one, give something up, and then also do something extra. And it could be extra prayers or service. And I make this poster, and um, it's based on the scripture, Psalm 141, may my prayer be set before you like incense. So I have a thurible, and there's a, um, an incense curl coming out for each family member. I have our names all written here. And we put all the intentions on the poster. And then when the kids were younger, they got a, a sheet of stickers. And every time they did a good work or said a prayer or gave something up, they could add a sticker to their, um, their incense curl. And the hope here was that they could connect that what they're doing, their prayers, what they're giving up is actually... Um, building up not just themselves but the church as well um, we also people who have died like our neighbor died this year we will put her funeral notice um, on the around so we can remember her in prayer and what I found that um, why this really works is because it's in a common place it's right by our dining room table and it's a daily thing and it doesn't take very long, and it's visible, so there's an accountability there. Along with the chart or the um, poster, my husband, this is more his personality, is an Excel spreadsheet, and he lists on there what each person has um, given up and what they're going to do. And then we get to initial it every week. <laughs> and as so we can see, mom is, mom's giving up Facebook for Lent, so. <laughs> <laughs> this will be my, we'll miss you, Anne. <laughs> my, my big sign-off. <laughs> so that's about it there. When my kids are older, they're 11 to 21, so they don't get the stickers anymore. But when they were younger, that worked. So where did you, like with the when they're really little, where did you kind of start with them? Because Lent is so, well, I guess it's not super complex, but there's just a lot of sort mm -hmm. of facets of Lent. Mm -hmm. So what did you kind of start with with your littlest ones? Um, well... It really started when they were just babies. As a, a couple, we would go to Stations of the Cross, we would do our Lenten practices. So they got to see all of these things. And then I would say they didn't really quite start to understand it until maybe they were four or five, that they were just giving something up. But I think the younger ones learned more quickly because they learned it from their siblings and they were much more likely to um, imitate them. I do remember when Joseph was maybe three years old, he used up his whole sticker pack in just a few days. <laughs> so um, that wasn't really legitimate, but he was following his older siblings. So I'd say they, they really can't be too young to start things. You just do what you can do, and they, they pick up more than you realize. Sure. Yeah. Um, so do you have like examples of like things that maybe the littlest ones started by giving up that worked well for them? Well, a very, very easy thing is sweets. Mm -hmm. So just um, that's what we usually give up as a family. Um, but the prayer, um, the things that we do, they can participate in prayer from a very young age, and that's something we do with them. Right. 
So how did you, so for sweets, you mentioned how it's sort of hard to get them to understand like why, why it makes sense to give something up. Um, what kind of um, ways did you use to explain that to the kids? Well, I think I learned that I really can't explain it because for a young child, more cake will always be better. And I, I don't, there's just no convincing. So as a parent, what I do is I provide the opportunity I do it with them, and now that I have two children in college, I see why I did it, they see why they did it. Um, my daughter, who is a uh, junior, three months into her freshman year, she said, Mom, I'm able to do so much at school, and I can see it's because of how you raised me. You made me work hard and give things up, and." Because of that, I have the skills to do what I want to do. So we want to give things up because we want self-mastery, especially over sin. And we're never going to be able to do that unless we learn how to, you know, tame the flesh. Mm. And a child, I have not yet seen one who will voluntarily do that. Right. So, so it really is just, this is what we're doing. This is what we do in our family. And they're not going to tell you they like it for, right. for a couple decades. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I know that, um, I can't remember exactly what age, but I know that there's a certain age, I want to say it's maybe 10, when um, the church says that they should begin fasting, or maybe it's even older, it might be teenagers. Well, 14 is, I think, the adult fast, Okay. 14 and up. So how did you, um, did they start getting into a little bit of fasting um, when they were younger, or how did you introduce the idea of fasting to them? Uh, let's see. Well, we did it as a family, so we would fa we'd abstain from meat on Fridays and um, Ash Wednesday. And I think for the younger kids, it was more just going without a non-essential thing because we didn't want to deprive them of food. They were children. Um, but when they were 14, we did tell them this is what the church asks of you, that you um, have one full meal and the other two can't eat full the other ones and no eating in between. So that's something they can do. Right. Okay. Um, can I ask you about something that does not have to do with this project, but it's sure. another project I've noticed? So I noticed that you do um, a Seder supper with your family. We do. Um, and I'm really curious about that. I know you know, very basically what a Seder Supper is, but maybe um, our friends on Instagram and Facebook don't. But I was just wondering okay. if you could tell us, like, how you got, like, what basically it is and how that got its, got it, <laughs> how that got started and um, how, um, how that is part of your faith life. Um, we do a Seder because it's a way to link the Old and New Testament and the Old and New Covenant together. So it's a teaching thing for our children. I know there are different schools of thought on this. Um, some might consider it being disrespectful or insensitive to the Jewish faith, and that certainly isn't our intention. I will admit that I haven't really pursued why that might not be a good one because mm. I don't I don't want to stop doing this Seder meal with my kids because it's um it's become very, a very meaningful tradition for them. So um, the Seder is the Jewish Passover. Remember, the Jews ate unleavened bread. They did everything so that the plague of death would would pass over them. And so there are Old Testament scriptures, so we look at that, um, that we look at that story and that place in history and how it um, goes into Jesus and the new covenant and his sacrifice on the cross and how that saves us from our sins mm -hmm. and from death. So in this um, Seder meal we do follow the order and seder means set order we follow a certain order by drinking cups of wine and it's always nicholas homemade wine and our kids do get little wine glasses <laughs> and um but we do um connect it to jesus and the new covenant mm. so it's not strictly a jewish seder right um, but over the years, we didn't intend for this to happen, but my children can invite different families and teachers that they'd like to have come. So it's been very multi-generational. A number of families will have 30-plus um, people, and musicians will come and accompany our, our songs. 
and it's just been a um, something that really builds our life it builds family life and builds a connection to the whole community of we aren't just a family but we have friends and neighbors and um, teachers and we're all one community yeah. I think that's really cool in um, the Seder Supper and also I noticed in your presentation here how you tied it to um, the community to the whole church and then um, also in this case to like the communion of the saints in the case of your Lent project I think that's really cool mm -hmm. um, so and then I guess one maybe one final question okay unless our camera person has any questions <laughs> he's shaking his head no okay um, but, <laughs> um, so you I know are super super busy with many many things because um, of your own life your children's life and your parents and I think probably a lot of people um, that are following us on social media are also busy like that so how um, do you carve out meaningful time for yourself in Lenten practices? I think my first thought was I don't but <laughs> actually one thing it's on this list here um, and it's carved out and I've, it's written so it's public that you need to leave mom alone for this. Um, I have, my daughter gave me a um, prayer journal and it's for reflection on the Sunday gospel. Mm. And so every Sunday I'm going to take time to uh, make sure that I uh, contemplate that and meditate on it and journal. Yeah. So um, I think it's, it's a challenge. I'm not going to be, um, I'm going to be honest about this. It's a challenge because it's, as a mom, you're so geared to take care of your children, it's hard to say no to them. And I'm not really successful at this, but I'm becoming more um, comfortable with the idea of saying, I'm off the clock right now, and I need some time to just sit with my thoughts. Yeah. Good. Well, good for you that you're doing that on, on Sundays. That sounds like a lot of fun. I just mm -hmm. got a... Um, a Blessed Is She journal James bought me, um, who's our camera person um, for those no, I'm watching from home, but um, I just got a, um, a Lenten Blessed Is She journal that um, I'll be doing during Lent as well, so that's kind of a fun fun new way for me to spend time in Lent. So, mm -hmm. um, Well, I think we'll um, say goodbye to our audience today, um, so thank you for joining us, mm -hmm. audience, and also thank you Anne for sharing your wisdom with us. You're welcome. So, thank you.